Master Sword Music. TJ the Gamer. Yeah, this the Chrono Show. Games, music, movie, TV, we got what you need. Plus the gamers round yeah, we. This the Chrono Show. Games, music, movie, TV, we got what you need. Plus the gamers round yeah, we. This the Chrono Show. Games, music, movie, TV, we got what you need. Plus the gamers round yeah, we. This the Chrono Show. Games, music, movie, TV, we got what you need. Plus the gamers round yeah, we. Yeah, this the Chrono Show. Games, music, movie, TV, we got what you need. Plus got one of the best cast that you have ever seen. You really missing out if you haven't heard. That this show here to stay, so go pass the word Old school or new school, check us out on YouTube It don't matter what you like, we got something for you Just one more thing to say before I start to close Shout out to my homies at the Chrono Show the Chrono Show Games, music, movie, TV, we got what you need Plus the gamers round, yeah, we That's the Chrono Show Games, music, movie, TV, we got what you need Plus the gamers round, yeah, we That's the Chrono Show Games, music, movie, TV, we got what you need Plus the gamers round, yeah, we That's the Chrono Show Games, music, movie, TV, we got what you need Plus the gamers round, yeah, we Thunder, 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 thundercats! Ho! <laughs> I, I like that intro, you know, but either way, uh, ever, welcome, man. <laughs> welcome to the Chrono Show, and um, I don't know if you hear my voice, I'm, a, I'm better, I, I got COVID yesterday or whenever it happened a few days ago, but I'm actually doing pretty good, got some my hot tea, I wish it was something else, but this is what I got today, and we have some of our co-hosts, so we got Ryan Drayson, what's going on, dude? How's it going, guys? Yeah, DJC Game Studios. What's happening? We got Ray Strazis. What is up, everybody? The mashed potato dude, Jeff. Yo, hello. And we got our special guest today. Uh, once again, for the second time, we got Ian Petrella. And welcome back to the show. <laughs> nice to have you, and I appreciate the opportunity to, you know, have you again and ask some questions. And yeah, and sure. um, well, this time... Was, at the beginning, I was like, I, I, I didn't think I was going to be able to do it. But, you know, here I am. So... But I've Glad only been doing these for my friends. I appreciate you so much. You still on the press list. So. Nice. <laughs> it's oh, definitely. Uh, 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 I remember talking to you a, a few months ago, and you know, and when we talked about how you know you were going to be here, and then you know things happened, and we talked again, and I'm just glad that you um, were thinking, and you know. How you know we wanted to come to the show and we put put this together and we here we are today. So yeah. um it's, it's one of those things where you didn't really know where your mind was going to be. So you just figured, you know what? You know, I didn't know if I was you know, what I was going to be like. So I just said, I'm just not going to do anything. You know, there were certain things that I had to cancel out on, and then as time went on, you know what? I'm going to do the show. I like I like when I do the show. 
So cool, cool. Um, I think last time we spoke a lot about um, the first uh, film, and definitely we're going to go into the second film uh, that you recently did. Uh, we can go into both films and mix it up a little bit. Um, but um, definitely excited. When I was on the show last, did, did I know? Did we know that the second film was coming out, or we didn't? No, know? you didn't. No, I, you didn't um, tell us at all. No. We you knew about it, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm wondering. Is like, is it, I can't remember exactly when and if I've already done it. Um, no, I don't. Even, I don't even think. No, there's no way that I could have known about it last time. We would have done the show like, a year ago. Yeah, it was. It was around a year ago from now. Yeah, and I didn't find out about it until. I mean, we'll we'll probably get more into that. But how I found out and when I found out is also part of the whole story of what happened. So. Yeah, so so it looks like um so from that point last year, last what was it last November, December, when did filming start for the new new film or when did you find out about it? I found out through um someone sent me a link on Facebook that they were making a sequel and that <laughs> starring Peter and that that was it. Um I didn't get any, you know, normal letter from Warner Brothers the Legendary saying, hey, we're doing a sequel. Like, found out like everybody else did. Um, you know, through Variety Hollywood Reporter. And that was in January of, I guess, of this year. And then they said production was going to be starting up in February. And so at that point in time, if you with production, if it sounded like production was starting up in about four weeks from when you got the information, you're pretty much assuming you're not going to have anything to do with it. And that it's already casted. You don't know really what the story is about. Um, so it was a few weeks later, maybe, maybe about a week before February started, that I got an email from Legendary and they said that the director, uh, Clay Cadis, wanted to uh, speak with me in regards to being in the film. So it just all was just happening so fast. It's like you find out about it and then all of a sudden next thing you know they they're calling you up and saying, Yep, we, we want you in it. Do you want to be in it? I'm like, yeah of course. I'd be a fool to say no. Uh, to something like that. But you know, I, I still had to audition for it, which was a funny thing. So Oh really? <laughs> Wow. We'll see if you make the part. If you make the part yeah. of Enid. You be you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it was one of those, you know, yeah, because they wanted to bring back everybody. You know, as many, as much as the original cast as they possibly could, they wanted to bring back. And, but they still had, you know, it's still a film and it's still the vision of the director and the producer. So they want to make sure that the actors that they put in are going to fit the part that they want to play. And they didn't really have anything to go by as far as look at my cast, you know, and say, yeah, well, you know, he's still acting, he's still a good actor to fill the role. So that's why I had to do an audition. And they were already in Bulgaria when uh, everything started. So everything was just, I had to just take myself reading lines and send the video um, through the internet. And then Clay just said, yeah, I just want to let you know. Got the job and you're gonna be part of it. Thanks. Thank you. So. <laughs> now did you did you fly to India for that scene or was that on set? <laughs> that was on set in Bulgaria. Yeah. Okay. And actually, yeah, everything was everything was shot in Bulgaria. In fact, um the set, the India set was used was the same set as the, the bar. So they had to tear down the bar and then rebuild the. Oh bar. what! So, yeah. <laughs> oh man, not the bar for real. It's not. That was all. That was a set. That was inside. No kidding. Wow. It looked it looked really good, didn't it? Yeah, I did. It did. It did. I saw the inside of the bar um, right before they tore it down. I was like, okay. And then you watch it on the movie. You're going, no, that's that's a real bar. That's the power of lighting. <laughs> yeah. Right. Get good lighting and you can make it look like you're anything. 
So I would, yeah, that's, that's definitely really awesome to know. Um, I want to, I got more things to ask, but I want to kind of go around to give everyone a chance to start off with. Um, we can give a chance to, uh, let's go DJ Game Studios. What you got? You got a good question? I, I have kind of an off topic question, but I know, uh, I think you kind of touched on this, but have you done anything with, with uh, puppeteering or anything recent uh, uh, with that at all? I, yes, yes, and no. Um, Yes, I'm <laughs> working on a few things. Just, cool. Things are becoming a pain in the ass to build. So as they get built, then I'll have <laughs> more to talk about. But yeah, I'm, I'm working on um, I'm working on a couple stuff, a couple things right now. I mean, just just my own projects. Nothing. Yeah. Really. I'm working with the studio. No, um, I think to be working with the studio because their money, their stuff. I don't have to pay for it. Right. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping within like the next couple months at least I'll have something that I can start uh, promoting to show people. But right now cool. everything, is, right. you know, some stuff is still in the sculpt stage and it's <laughs> worked on it. So um, that's so awesome, man. That's like I wish I would have like got in it. I mean, I was such yeah. a oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> But I just love because you can just create anything with puppet, you know. Just, just you can. It's just like a whole different world, and I just absolutely love that. I was, I'm a huge Muppets fan, like a huge Muppets fan. So, like, oh my, it just anything oh Jim Henson touches, I just absolutely love. You know, from the movies to the to the TV show, and just just every character, it almost feels like they're real, you know. And that that's what I just love about it. I just always love that. I mean, that's the difference between. Um, I don't know if I talked about this last time, but one of the shows that I worked on that was shot in Canada, and that was with the Henson Company. And I got to work with the Henson Company. Is it was uh, it was shot it in the around late '90s, and at the time there wasn't a whole lot of practical effects that were being used. Everything was kind of being you know CGI was being brought into you know, mm-hmm. the character where the director and the creator of the show, he was very adamant about wanting to use puppets for the show. And Warner Brothers was like, well, it's just not practical. You know, it's easier to do CG, and that's what's hot right now. He gave a great speech. and was like, what, what you just said is that when you have a puppet, it is almost, you know, it is real. You can't touch it. Yeah. You know, it's in the same air that you are. It's the same yeah. light that shines on you. It's shining. Like, you could actually sit down and have a conversation. With right. Even though there's a puppeteer in somebody, it's physically there though, which was exactly. makes a difference. It really does. Right. And that to me, what I think I've always loved about, you know, say the Muppets over Disney, because they were real. They were actually there. Yeah. It was material that you could touch. You know, you know even though you knew it was fleece, but you're like, I could still touch it. <laughs> No, that's awesome, man. Well, I can't wait to hear in the future for your project. That's that's awesome. Awesome. Um, Mashed Potato Dude, you got a question for, uh, for Ian? Sure, sure. Um, so what was it like? Uh, I, I'm going to – I'm pretty sure it's been like 40 years since the original film came out. Uh, how did it feel working with uh, some of the original cast again, like uh, Peter, um, for the new film? It was – Probably, I would have to say this. I'm not knocking it, but I'd say it was one. I was probably the most nervous I've ever been doing a part in my entire life. And one of the reasons is because one, I didn't really get to work with people. We were very, we very, we weren't in, in a whole lot of. You know, we had you know a phone call on you know the phone call from India, and then there was. You know the NC, but <clears throat> and also because we were, <clears throat> even though it was still in you know it was in Bulgaria, they still had very strict COVID restrictions as far as on set. So, you know, if you weren't needed on set, then you didn't need, then you didn't have to be on set. So there yeah. was a lot of you know camaraderie that usually goes on. Yeah. In the movie. But it was it was nerve wracking because one, I hadn't worked with Peter in a very long time. And Peter, as we all know, is a very serious, uh, you know, producer now. You know, he's not this independent guy. He's actually, um, you know, he produced 
Iron Man and Elf, all these movies, these big. So I'm working with a very serious guy right now, and not <laughs> some dude that I was with my brother when I was born. Yeah, so with a Hollywood producer with thirty million dollars on the line, and so I want to make sure I get this right, you know, and that I you know, perform. So. It was, it was very, I wasn't nervous to the point where I'd freeze up and I couldn't do it. I was nervous because one, this character, Randy, is coming back. And what is everybody going to expect him to be? And because the character basically had almost, I don't want to say no personality in the first one, but he didn't really do much. He was just kind of there. So he really could turn into anything. And I knew people are going to have these expectations of what he was going to do. And then there's also the point where you're acting and everything is completely different from what this kid is. So you're trying to find little nuances in your performance to kind of throw in there, you know, that maybe somebody would recognize. And somebody caught on, like, when I would sit there and frown a little bit, you know, that's the, I, I was trying to make, like, certain faces. That Randy, like after he got off the phone, you know, and he hung up the phone and he kind of was sitting there sulking. I was trying to make the same face that I did when he was with, like, you know, having to eat his coat. <laughs> <laughs> so, trying to do little things like that. So that's where I didn't, I, I felt like I was like free to do what I want, but not so much. Yeah. Like, you were asking, like, working with the cast, it was, it was another thing. Like everything was just so different, so fresh and, and, and new. Um, and I didn't really get to work with you know the cast that much. Like, to say Peter and Scott R D got to work with them. Um, but because we all knew each other and we were there for three weeks in Bulgaria, so we just all hung out. We'd go out to dinner and go get drinks, and have, have fun, you know. Not too much fun because we're all old men. So, like, <laughs> just like, what do you want? Let's just go to dinner. We're like, just exciting is like, what's a good restaurant? <laughs> no, right. no swanky bars. You know, we're there with a Hollywood production, but yeah, it's like, get some sushi. Nice. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Got got some for us, Ryan. Uh, yeah, um, this might actually be one that uh, you might want to kind of sit with and think over and let percolate, but um, last time we talked about some kind of fun and interesting stories about the house, uh, I was wondering if this time you might kind of give us some fun, maybe heartwarming, maybe funny, maybe a little weird or offbeat uh, stories about uh, some of your experiences with fans of A Christmas Story. <laughs> the house? Or just fans in general? Just in general, yeah. It doesn't have to be at the house. Mm. Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> really good question. Do a whole show just on that question. <laughs> <laughs> so, great, great question. I mean, let's see. I mean, you could start just, you know, being at the house. Um, I don't know. I mean, what, how, how do you want to hear the, 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 the clean ones or the not clean ones? <laughs> Whatever you got. <laughs> Whatever is the most spicy or interesting. Not so clean ones. <laughs> Let me tell you a gross one. Um, okay, so there was this this, uh, this older gentleman who was like in, probably like in his late fifties, maybe sixties, and he was there with his wife. And he came up and he was just talking. To me. This was at the house when I was hosting a little events there, and he came up to me and he, you know, was just asking me some questions about the film. Seemed like a nice guy, and then he was talking to one of the tour guides. And he started telling the tour guide, and I kind of overheard him a little bit, saying how, you know, the whole mama's little piggy thing, there was such a, a there's something sexual about it. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> what? <clears throat> Creepy. And going off about he, he found like these words or whatever that scene, there was a sexuality about it that intrigued him. And the tour guy came up and was like, you know, just stay away from this guy. Don't don't talk to him. Don't talk to him. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't want to get involved. <laughs> Why would they bring it up with the tour guide? <laughs> I don't I don't know, but this is so oh, creepy. He left and he went to the gift shop with his wife. And we're like, oh, I wonder what the hell he's buying. What is he buying? And so we call over there and we say, Hey, the, the guy the, the guy with the white hair and the wife, did he buy something? They're like, yeah. Like, what did he buy? They go, He bought a bit. Oh my god. Oh, <laughs> no. <Christ. laughs> All right. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> no way. This guy found a fetish in this. <laughs> oh, God. So, so yeah. now I knew you were going to say something like a bib. <laughs> I was like, do they sell official Christmas story bibs or something? They sell the bib, yeah. They do sell the bib. Wow. You buy Randy's bib, and that's what he bought. I'm going, oh, boy. So, yeah, it's, I mean, they're, there there was another um there was another fan that i got i got upset with and i was standing there talking to somebody and i was about to sign something and all of a sudden i just i feel this like push like someone just pushed me like shoved me and i'm you know thinking what you know who did that somebody i know like it's usually like something like a shove like somebody that you would know like is like hey up here and I turn around and it's this woman. And I go, I don't know her at all. And I go, what the hell did you do that for? And she goes, well, I just wanted to push you on the ground and see if you could get up. I'm like, oh, oh. oh. So you would get that. But then, you know, there were the the, uh, the heartwarming stories. Um, a lot of those never get told. I know there was one. There was one woman who came in. And she was, I had my, my merchandise table and she was just grabbing everything that was on the merchandise table and having me sign it. And in my mind, I'm just going to ching, to ching, to ching. <laughs> right. <laughs> and she goes, um, I go, yeah, you're buying a lot of stuff here. And she goes, I'm sending it to uh, my son and his friends that are over uh, in Iraq. And I just went, oh, wow. okay. All right. And go, they watch that movie all the time. It's kind of the one thing that gets them through their hard days. Okay. Um, just take it. Just take it. No charge. That's awesome. You know. Uh -huh. So, you know, that's the one thing that I, I you know, I, I definitely, it's like, you know, these, these signings is, uh, um, I definitely, you know, if you're a, a paramedic, uh, EMT or a firefighter, you know, because I got family in that business, you know, I don't charge and stuff like that. So I'm like, I'm not going to take your money, you know. Right. You're sending it for, you know, despite what you think of what's going on, you know, they're there fighting. If, if right. this movie is getting them through being shot at, then they deserve, you know, pictures, DVDs, whatever. So, <laughs> but that is awesome. Yeah, like That's I great. Said, that could be a whole other show. Just <laughs> Uh, you know, all the good years. So. Yeah, I'm sure it's a lot of good stuff here. And besides some of the negative things, but there's a lot more positives and great moments. Yeah, it's a combination of both, and it all makes it into a nice combo of experience. And that's how you have to see it. You know, it's, I don't look at really any of the bad stuff and go, damn it, why? You know, there's nothing that bad that happened. Um, but I mean, all the good stuff and the bad stuff. Just being at that house was. And you stayed there for about a year, didn't you? Yes, I was in the area for about a year. I, mean, I always want to clarify; I didn't actually stay oh, sorry. in the house for a year, <laughs> just for a short time. And then when the apartment across the street opened up, I moved into there because it was it's bigger and more more comfortable to live in. Um, you can't really you can, you can stay in the house, but you can't really live in. That little, they turned the attic into a loft. So it's nice to stay and visit, but yeah, living there, you go, you go crazy. Yeah. So, not to mention, um, 
when I was inside the house, because the way the lock is, you have your upstairs lock, and then you have a small staircase that leads down to the kitchen. And uh -huh. then the kitchen leads to a door that goes out into the hallway where the bathroom and the kids are. Well, there's a sign on there that says employees only. Now, we're all fairly intelligent people. We see a sign that says employees only. That means employees only. You're not wearing a fucking red shirt that says Christmas Story House. You don't get to go through that door, right? <laughs> well, a lot of people. <laughs> so I would be downstairs on my day off, you know, making breakfast. And I'm standing there in my boxer shorts and a t shirt, chopping up, you know, onions or whatever. And someone would come walking right through the door. And they'd stop and look, and I'd have a knife in my hand. And I would just say, <laughs> <laughs> Is this part of the tour? Oh, What's you? happening? <laughs> so I had fun with some of those people. You know? <laughs> it didn't matter. They didn't care. It was like, oh, employees only? I guess I can go. <laughs> I downstairs chopping up something with a knife. <laughs> <laughs> I got in trouble a lot for it, but you know, hey, come on. <laughs> so. Right. Um <laughs> uh, let's see, uh, real quick, um um Ray Strazes, did you have a question you wanted to ask? Yeah. So we all know Christmas story, like Christmas story is classic, obviously. Um haven't seen the sequel yet, but I'm looking forward to uh sitting down watching it this weekend. Um besides the Christmas story series, is there any like film project or like puppeteering or something that brought you joy like your favorite project that you worked on um yeah it has been, there's been a few i mean as far as like puppeteering goes um there's only been there's only been a few i think you know when i got to work on the ninja turtles i mean that was pretty exciting to be part of that when they crossed over the power range um, you know, and got to do the animatronic. I mean, that was, you know, because I was just getting into it at the time. So I was getting introduced to all this, this new technology and you know, different forms. Um, that was definitely exciting. And, you know, I was, I was an Ninja Turtle, obviously. Not as much as everybody, I think a lot of people were, but. Oh, I love Ninja Turtles. Yeah, I really like oh, yeah. it. Ninja Turtles pretty cool. And I love, you know, I love the movie, that first one that came out. So. To be a part of that, you know, was exciting. And of course, you know, working on the thing with Henson, that was, I think, the, the beginning part of that and seeing the development of how all this stuff came about was way more exciting. Being able to go to the creature shop and watch them build and sculpt, you know, because we watch, like, we'll see, like, the makings of, you know, a movie behind the scenes. And now you're actually there inside the studio, like, mm -hmm. you know, the clay and the foam rubber. Yeah, that must be amazing. So that that was always um, an exciting experience, and I think even doing this this movie, um, the sequel was, was also exciting. It was the first time in a long time that you got to be back onto like a, a, a big time, you know, production, and you know, see sets and what they do. Um, and that just kind of got you, you know, motivated. It got me motivated again to, you know, think a little bigger now, you know, of what you want. Like, okay, I've, I've seen it, I've tasted it. it. You can think a little bigger now, you know, why not? Why the hell? That's so cool. Probably such a good experience, too. Probably changed over the years, you know, but 40 years. Yeah. Everything. And especially, I mean, to go to, you know, to have to go to Bulgaria, another country. Like, mm hmm. You know, let's go do this. And uh, it was definitely an experience. And everybody, you know, was wondering, what is it like to film a movie there? It's the same as it is to film a movie. Guys. Different language. That's it. <laughs> so. Did you, um, so that what was it, Ninja Turtles? Was that the, the last mutation or something like that? The one that you did with the episode with the Power Rangers? Yeah, the Ninja Turtles had their own series, a live action series called The Last Mutation. And um <clears throat> because oh, it was the next mutation. Okay. Oh yeah, the next mutation. Because it was also under the, the Saban company, they decided to do a crossover with the Power Rangers and Ninja Turtles. So I 
last uh, the next mutation was uh, shot in Vancouver, Canada. So they shot um, this one down here in California. So they had to hire all new. I think they like hired all new puppeteers and they hired all new voice actors. Hmm. So I just happened to know the guy who developed create the show, and he's like, "Yeah, come on in." So I just just showed up on the set. You'll be Michelangelo. Okay. So that's awesome. <laughs> that's so cool. Please. Sorry, I'll just be Michelangelo. Yeah, it's no problem. <laughs> um, Michael, it's it's funny because all the all the stuntmen who there were only a few stuntmen that spoke English. Most of the stuntmen were brought in from Japan, and so they didn't really speak a lot of they didn't speak a lot of English. So Michelangelo didn't really speak a lot of English, but he kind of became like my buddy after a while, the stuntman. And because we were both, um, I was a, I was a smoker at the time, and so was he. So as soon as he get that head off, he would just give me a signal, and we're like, "Let's go!" So we'd go and sneak off the night after. Sweet. Night <laughs> and we developed this thing with like a like a, a handle with a clothespin because he couldn't take those gloves off. So he couldn't smoke, so we had to you know I'd have to help him out, and we'd sit there and just kind of hang with each other and try and communicate some way but um no i mean we, we got along and, you know it's just it would have been better because we could have said hey you know in this scene what do you do this but we, we, we couldn't do that but this is the uh extended cut because the last time we had you talk about it we didn't talk about the cigarette thing that's cool so we're yeah. gonna call this the extended version <laughs> so <laughs> I, I watched the episode um actually yesterday um, with the Power Ranger, and I was watching it. I remember as a kid, I, like, I did like it at the time. When I watched it, I was like, what the hell was I watching? I was like, I don't know. It's just the the, the little lighting effects when the turtles appear with the little, little green little lights was just so bad. But I yeah, did yeah. like overall the feeling of turtles and Power Rangers. I did enjoy that. I saw the uh, how the mixing of the voice scene was with the animatronics and all that. It, it was still pretty okay. still pretty good. You know, it was like. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't match up. They spent <laughs> like the movements of the, the stuntman, you know, where to go in camera, making time to actually matching up the dialogue with the, the puppeteering. Uh, we did like maybe three things, and they're like, okay, moving on. Like, no, that sucked. I need to do it for that. Like, <laughs> so nothing matches. It's so bad. But it's still so cool to be able to, to work on it. Did you ever um, or, um, find the episode we were talking about last time where it was um, Head Over Heels, the episode with Chips? Did you ever see that or find that again? I did find it on YouTube. It do you – do does anyone know that he was in that he was in Chips episode? What was it, 1982 or three? Yeah, like 82, 83. Oh, no. Guys, give me a second. Give me, give me one second because I'm going to play that clip right now. I have it ready. Ooh. I'm off. It was when they brought, in, uh, they brought in the new his new partner. It was like the first yeah, yep, yep. I actually did. I bought the episode today and I pulled it up. So <laughs> you can buy you can buy like little episodes and uh, <coughs> share screen. I gotta make sure I do this correct. Share screen. Get the right episode. It's gonna pull us to the side on uh, Chrome tab. You guys see it? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Here it goes. It's uh the part where you'll see in in. No, any of the other victims. Mark, Mrs. Montefiore, Mr. Wyndham. No, the Mrs. Parker and I don't mix socially pretty much. Oh, go on, the engine service will pick that up. Can you think of anything that Sandy knows when all the victims leave their house? Hey, we still got a proof of connection between her and the guys in the truck. Yeah. <laughs> Puppies for sale. There he is. For sale. sale. <laughs> hey, son. Come over here. Watch yourself cross the street. Come on. How much? Five dollars. Five dollars for a space puppy? Four dollars? Now it's four? You could have them for free. My dad says he'll drown them. Oh, no. 
I think five dollars <laughs> is a very fair price. You do? Absolutely. Here you are. There. Oh boy. Thank you. Wait a minute. I gotta tell you something. He really isn't from outer space. No kidding. You could have fooled me. <laughs> 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 that's cool uh, yeah. <laughs> how was that that was my first tv gig so first time Not on bad. a television show and uh yeah it was, it was that was a lot of fun because i mean you know who wasn't a who wasn't a fan of chips so, oh dude i used to watch that all the time man dude i gotta rewatch them <laughs> so, yeah i found another one um I did a commercial for uh, Tropicana Orange Juice with um, a, uh, a a person we all used to know named Bruce Jenner. <laughs> oh no, kidding! <laughs> really? Wow. Now, uh, Caitlyn Jenner. So. <laughs> right. No kid, that's cool though. Yeah, definitely awesome. Yeah. Um, go ahead. I was gonna say that those '80s shows are just so good, like Dukes of Hazard, Chips, Knight Rider, yeah. all that yeah. stuff was so cool and iconic, man. It's you don't see stuff like that anymore, as or you know, as today. You know, yeah, you know, a child actor back then is you watched a lot of those shows and then you go audition for those shows. <laughs> You're like, oh, I really want to get the A.T. Oh yeah, right. Oh. <laughs> you just didn't have what it takes to be on the A.T. <laughs> so how, how was it auditioning as a kid was it pretty pretty tough or um, I, I would imagine it's pretty different than like when you're adult it's it's not as tough um you know because it depends on, on what you do um like for, for that one they just want personality so you just go in there and they say these are your lines and just how you you know react if you have the look and you're cute enough then they'll, they'll pick you so it's you really don't you some some auditions you know they they have a they're they can be a little bit more intense um because sometimes what they'll do is they'll find like five kids that they like they're like okay we got to pick a kid so they'll bring you in like multiple times and say okay read it with this person read it with that person read it with this person and then you know you find out you get the part or you don't find out until the episode ends. <laughs> oh, I didn't get the mark. <laughs> so, I don't get to be BA's little bit, a little bit. You know, so. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, real quick, um, in about maybe 10 minutes or less, we're going to go into a thing called the mashed potato eating contest. That's yeah. later on. I mean, soon. But I wanted to first touch base on your uh, – did you see the, whole, the, the new movie, the whole movie uh, after it was finished, Ian? Mm-hmm. What do you think your all-around feeling of the movie? Did you, because we got that Christmas feeling with the first film, what were your new feelings, or did you like it? Did you not? I did like it. I liked it a lot. And, I mean, I'm obviously going to have a different reaction than, say, anybody else's. Um, you know, for me, it's like, I mean, I read the script. Um, I got a sense of what it was about. But I didn't really, you know, seeing it finished, being in John was, was really kind of cool because I got to see it with, you know, so I'm wondering like, oh, I want you know what's going to happen. There were a lot of things that I didn't, I didn't read, and so there were some things that were surprising. But I did like, I, I loved what they did as far as the sequel. It's it's really hard to try and match what happened in '83, and yeah. I think to come up with. You know this idea, like it's about him and his family instead. Um, I, th- I think they did a really good job. This this one seems it's definitely different. Um, where the first movie was almost, you had Ralphie going through this. <clears throat> you know the whole story is he wanted this gun, but everybody it seemed like in that um, idea of the film, everybody had like their moment to do something. The dad had his moment with the leg on. Randy had his moment with the mashed potatoes. Flick had his moment with the tongue. Then you had the bully. It was almost kind of written more like a Seinfeld episode. Mm-hmm. This one was more a wonder you. This was more about, you know, just Ralphie kind of dealing with this one particular situation of, you know, 
uh, his, his dad. And um, that's the, the thing that I liked is that they didn't go too over the top with uh, the comedy and the gag. There were gags, but it wasn't like past people where they just like, hey, remember the flagpole scene? Well, we're going to just have like get his tongue stuck in something this time because that's what we all remember. Um, they didn't go in that direction. They wanted to just create a continuation of the character. And I, I really loved what they did. So, you know, I, I definitely I loved it. Uh, definitely, uh, for me, I would say I love the all-around feeling. You know, I love the first, you know, with the first film, it, you know, I had that Christmas feel. It was it's a great, beautiful movie. The second one gave me a new kind of Christmas feel, but also, it's hard to say, like, feel the same but also something new it was whole someone was loving it was emotional um a lot of emotions for me came with um darren mcgavin um the old man parker how they did a lot of you know it's a lot of about him too in a way you know he how ralphie's remembering his dad how he wants to make you know this um christmas as great as it was when he was around and so it brought a lot of you know respect too and just again my emotions and uh, i'm like i want to tear up and it's just like i Loved it so much, and a little bit of everything along with it. With um, even with the tavern scene, where the uh, I think is uh, shoot, I love the parts where it's, they call the death mail with um, for the stool um, rats they called it in the film, where they get a phone call and those guys are freaking out. They're like, Hey, is um, Larry Novak here? And I don't know, that those parts are just funny, yeah. and, and it, you know. You know, you know some funny parts that were within the film, or even at the scene where Ralphie is getting arrested by—I don't know if I want to spoil this. By <laughs> should I? If you haven't seen the film, no, Man. I shouldn't say right. I'll take my well, headphones who? out. Take your headphones <laughs> by, out. By, by a former <laughs> co-star. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Ralphie's getting arrested by. Oh my God! It's, it's Someone. It's, it's just—it's just like Someone's it's just great. Ass. Everybody yeah, plays a piece. Everyone yeah. plays a piece and can come back for a certain thing. And I was waiting for a character to come back and finally they were there. Even um, what's his name? Um, oh, it's my it's my guy. Hold on, I was talking to him recently. Um, uh, who played the little the little bully? I get his forget his name. Um, Cro- yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, Anaya. So like the last minute. Yeah, he had he had it for like a two just for three seconds or two seconds of film that he was in. They didn't know how to really bring him back, but they, they wanted him to come back so bad. And that... Happened. It was a little disappointing. Yeah, but, I mean... I still like that it was there. Yeah, I'm glad you got to do it. I'm glad he got to be a part of it. Because um, I know how disappointed he was. But, I know he did talk about it before, like uh, one of his recent uh, things on Facebook, uh, Facebook Family, where he one day had more ideas, but I guess they couldn't run with certain things or... You know, either way, I thought I, yeah. he's great, and he—I still laughed a lot. I laughed loud when they did a little punch thing again. I was just like, right. <laughs> just those few seconds were good. They were great, and yeah, I'm there glad. Was yeah, supposed to be mention of him in the beginning of it. They were going to have a picture of him on the wall and say that, you know, he he, he died uh, at the steel mill. And they were going to mention that, just you know, say, well, you know, give up, you know, oh, you know, poor Grover, you know, he had the steel mill, but. They didn't take that down because then they thought, oh, well, that's going to lead up to the other scene. And they wanted that to be like a really big surprise to reveal. But I know um, that was the only scene with him that was shot here in Alabama. They shot that on a green screen. And I remember talking uh, to Peter the day after they shot it. We all went out to dinner. And he showed me some some clips of you know, with the shot. And he told me, let me tell you, he said, it was more expensive to film that scene. We, it would have been cheaper to fly all the crew and all the actors back to Bulgaria, do that three-second scene, fly back, than it was to film it here in L.A. Wow. So if people wonder why are they moving movies to Europe, because it's just, you know, what thirty million will get you in Bulgaria is, you know, laughable. What will get you? So, so it's unbelievable. Get expensive. Yeah. Very expensive. Um, let's see. Who else saw the movie? Um, uh, DJC. What was your all around feeling with the film? It it was awesome. And I, I I was saying this before we went live. Um, 
that that I had my mom and my stepdad over, and they they usually head down to Texas for like the for the winter and stuff. And so they were about to take off. Right, it was whenever it came out. Was it just before Thanksgiving or just after Thanksgiving around November? The day it, it actually well, like debuted, and uh, I I was like, hey, why don't we put up my tree early? I'll cook some dinner. We'll, we'll you guys come over. We'll watch the new Christmas story. She said, oh, that sounds awesome. So we actually all sat down, you know, got our food, just like as as a family sat and watched it. Yeah, and there were some really I thought there's really heartfelt, touching scenes that that you just you, you tear up at. There's stuff there, the very classy throwbacks. I thought like they weren't too much. It's you know, it was just like, oh man, look at that. Oh, look, you know, it wasn't like throwing it in your face. It was it was done really classy. And um all in all, I thought it, it stood on its own. I really thought it was a good movie. I'll watch it probably every year. I, I think it was fantastic. They, they wanted to try and keep it that way, where it stood on its own. And I, I, I know I've read some of the comments and some of the other reviews where you know, people have not liked it. Um, it's understandable. You know, yeah. Some people are going to watch it, and it's not what they expected. Um, you know, that, that happens. It's fine. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we did our best. <laughs> so, yeah, I thought it was good, though. Yeah. It, it really, it. I think it did. It was because you know, I saw some of that people go like some early review or something that day, or, and they're like, oh, I'm like, I don't care. Like, I enjoy this. I'm gonna like it, you know, and and accept it for what it is. And went in coming out of it, going, are they are they nuts? Like, I'm like that. You had is every cast member that's possible is back, you know. And and it and it's a new story, and you, you see them all grown up from what they used to do. It, I don't I don't see why anyone that didn't love the first one wouldn't just absolutely love this one, and and where the characters are. I don't either. Yeah. I mean, why, you know? And it, I know it also got caught up in the whole oh Hollywood can't come up with new ideas, so they have to. Oh yeah. Well, you know, you came up with that, but <laughs> you can't even buy into that because why is it? You know, they come up with a, a, a concept like Cobra Kai, and everybody creams their jeans over it. <laughs> they come up with the new Lord of the Rings, and everyone's just, you know, shitting on it. Right. So it, That's on it, yep. Yeah, it's not a question that, you know, it's not that Hollywood's running out of ideas. This is the idea. Let's bring back the old shit. Why not? Right. You know, for real, for real. <laughs> I thought it was. I thought it was good enough to where you could. I mean, I I know they're probably not, but I'm saying you could do another one after this. You know, like I, I'm not. I'm not thinking they would. They would, but if they did, you know, I think it'd be a great holiday. You know, trilogy uh, I series. Have an idea for the third one. So all right, we're gonna. Oh, great. let us know what, what's the idea. Spoil <laughs> the, the beans. Idea for the third one. So uh, you can't I'll, tell us right now. I'll go ahead and say I think the third one should be it's a flash forward to uh, the mid '80s, and Ralphie got approached from a movie studio to turn his story into a movie. Uh, uh, ah, that should be that would be cool. Yeah, I think if they decide, I don't, I don't know if they're, if they're gonna uh, do a third one or not. They have to kind of wait to see what what happens with this. I wish for some reason. I mean, I was thinking about it. Do you wish? But I wish it was in theaters. I wish I could have went to the theater to go mm -hmm. see it. Just because I, I don't know. You know, I agree with that. I love seeing it in the theater too. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, everybody. I mean, that's what they wanted was it to be in theaters. But nowadays, I mean, you know, you have so many different options. Yeah. As to what to do, so. Um, it's on HBO right now where it first came out, but now I can see that you can buy it or rent it on, on YouTube, like a uh, Google search or something like that. Yeah, so it's more accessible. I think that's what they they wanted. Is I think maybe there's there's more of a longevity as far as um, you know getting getting money if you stream it or put it out for you know on demand as opposed to putting it in a movie theater as a you know, only a certain release. <clears throat> I don't know. It, it's it's hard to say nowadays. I mean, yeah, that's another thing people say. Yeah, I'd rather see a movie, but then it's like I love the fact that I never have to leave and I can watch anything I want. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, go ahead, Ray. I was just gonna say, um, even when the movie's in the theater, it comes out pretty quick on streaming afterwards. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's definitely like gotten a lot later. quicker. Yeah. But I, I know um, I know Peter, he said that he really wanted it 
to be in theaters. Um, it it didn't, you know, there's only a few theaters that it got to it got to play in, but it was like a one time thing. And we did a whole outdoor uh, screening of the Sinatra Museum here in Los Angeles. Showed up for that. You know, good enough. They said like over two thousand people showed up. It's not not bad. Yeah, that okay. sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> um, Mashed Potato Dude, uh, what was your all around uh, feeling of the movie? Um, I thought it was, I was thought it was pretty decent. Um. I don't think uh, I don't think it'll ever top the original. In my opinion, I wasn't really expecting it to, but you know, I was kind of decently surprised. I think the one thing was, I thought like uh, when I saw the trailer, I had a good feeling that it wasn't going to turn out like uh, the other things, the Christmas Story Live and the second Christmas movie that came out like a decade ago. Um, I kind of felt like, well, this this feels a little more like respectful, and it kind of feels a bit more progressive compared to the um, to the other ones. Like it, it seems like it has a, a better premise, and it's not just, hey, let's just take the original and do that again. Hey, remember when Ralphie did this? Let's do that again. Right. Hey, whenever we did this, yeah. it's like it's just a carbon copy, basically. Yeah. Um, and the fact that they got the mo a lot of the original cast back, and they're older okay. now. And whatnot. I I thought, you know, this looks interesting. I I, I really want to see this. And um, I was actually going to watch it on um, Christmas Eve because we actually watch a Christmas Story, the original one, um, every Christmas Eve. Um, but when I found out I was going to be on the show, I I decided to watch it um, last weekend because uh, my mom and my dad and my sister love watching that movie, so we decided to watch it last weekend. Just so I could, you know, be ready and not be spoiled about it on this show. But I, I thought it was decent. I, I thought it was pretty decent. And um, I had a lot of laughs and there was quite a lot of emotional moments. I'm sure uh, GC was kind of talking about it earlier with uh, oh, yeah. the old man and whatnot. And yeah. Um, yeah, and of course, whenever <laughs> you showed up, Ian, I, I was kind of pointing at the screen, oh, going, hey, I, I, I met that guy. I spoke to that guy before. <laughs> yeah, I flipped out a little bit once on the first thing came out with the India. Oh, shit, that's him. I was just <laughs> freaking out. <laughs> oh, I wish we could have seen more of you. We could have seen more of you. To be honest with you, I am completely happy with the size role that I got. Even the end too, when you showed up and you came to the house and you were talking, that was great. That was we, your parts were, you know, what I did. I very good. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm not upset because, you know, like I said, I mean, when you're making a film, you have a vision, you have an idea, and if yeah, you know, that doesn't not need it any more than what it was, then then we're fine. I was completely happy with it. So I like doing small roles anyway. I don't like doing so. I like doing you know, cameos, little on-off. You know, like next year. Yeah. Like if you want me to be in a movie? I'm gonna do two lines. Happy. Right. <laughs> well, you kidding me? They, they <laughs> yeah, next that that whole set that the, didn't they build all the houses next to it or something too? Like, didn't they do the Bumpus house and yeah, and, oh, in in the bar and everything was all built. They rebuilt that whole street in Bulgaria. Wow. That's not Cleveland. Right. Gee. Yeah. That's insane. Like, oh, that's awesome, though. It's not Cleveland. I mean, and it they did a great job because. Did not know that. Jeez. One of the other things is because I was living in that area for about a year, it was really bizarre to. You're at the studio in Bulgaria and they walk you and everything's blocked off. But they got some green screens up. Because they have to, you know, add some effects later. And you walk through this gate, and next thing you know, you're right on that street in Cleveland. I mean, they nailed it. I told, I told the director, I go, I said, he's in, he did it. And he goes, yep, he, this is why we shoot in Bulgaria, because, <laughs> you know, they would not be able to, you know, spend the amount of money in Bulgaria to recreate that whole block and look like that actual street from the 80s or from the 70s yeah um and plus i mean the other thing is you can't 
shoot that movie there now in Cleveland. It's impossible to shoot. There's no way you could shoot that. Because one, yeah, you'd have to, you know, everything, you know, the, the, the landscaping has all been modernized, you know, because it's now a tourist attraction. So you have to rip all that out. Right. And then change it up, make it look like battered or like, you know, and older. And you got that, that, got that crummy gift shop right next door, you know, across the street. Oh. <laughs> you have to you know, tear that thing down. And um, yeah, so it's like, you know, people are like, well, why don't you shoot in Cleveland? Because you, you can't. You can't now. It's, you know, it's way just, too public now. <laughs> yeah, right. You yeah. the down, you got to close the streets off. I said, you, you, can't, you can't shoot there now. So do that. Plus, I, you know, there was a news clip that said the owner said, I don't want this shot here at all. So, yeah, I heard they're selling it or so, now it's up for sale. It's up for sale. Yes, it is. Uh, it's not just the house. It's, I guess, it's the whole business. Oh. So you're basically buying, like, you're basically buying the whole business. So you're buying the house to give to continue the um, whole thing, or yeah. Well, he wants to sell to somebody who's been. Yeah, that makes sense. That's good, at least. But I know a lot of people, and like I said, I don't really have any business with the house. Um, I don't do anything. But a lot of people were coming to me and saying, "What's going to happen? What's going to happen?" Like, I don't care. It'll <laughs> <laughs> get sold, and someone will own it. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, you know. But then I would tell people, "Like, go, oh, guys, it, it doesn't matter. Okay, he's just he's just selling the business. Somebody else is going to buy it, and they're going to continue. He's not tearing it down. He's just selling. It. I don't know why." Who knows why he's selling it, but um, he is selling it. Someone's going to take it over. And yes, you'll still get to go there and take your pictures in front of the house. And you'll still get to go inside and stand next to the leg left the window. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I might have to do that someday. I've never been there. I've never been there. Hey, you know, you're still going to get to- hey, it's a leg lamp. You can still go to that gift shop and. I'm adamant about this. You can still go to the gift shop and buy all the crappy merchandise that you want. I keep that fucking gift shop. <laughs> <laughs> Burn that down to the ground. I just, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> and I, I used to tell the owner when we were friends, I go, this place is, it makes me want to vomit. This is where you're watching this movie just get, you know, just screwed. <laughs> hey, there's Ian, did you were shop in the in, in the neighbor, so it's like a neighborhood, and there's a house, and then he's built a gift shop in the neighborhood, or yeah, how is that? Actual neighborhood. That sounds kind of weird. Wow. Yeah, there are people kind of neat. Are living there? Um, they have to get up and go to work, and then they have to drive through the crowd. Damn gift shop. Going yeah, there's a gift shop. <laughs> yeah, hey, Ian, um, did you um, did you want um your name going to be La or? LA and I looked at your when we look at your everyone's name, yours has an LA. Did you look, want it that way? It said put in my name and I started to put I A and then it just stopped. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Give me a second. Yeah. It's supposed to be I A N and then my last name. And it just yeah. All right, I was just wanted to ask you. <laughs> I kind of noticed that's it earlier, but I, I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> yeah. I think so. I got it for you. Go in further with that. So I don't know why I did that. Yeah. So I had too many beers and didn't want to finish your name. Yeah. <laughs> sure. I, I, did, I, I did just want to say. I just want to say real quick that um, uh, last thing I wanted to say about my opinions of the movie is that I'm really glad that like so much of the original cast was able to come back and uh, <laughs> you especially. I was really hoping that you would be in the new movie, and when I saw you, I was really, I was really happy to see that. Oh, it was really you. overjoyed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. But, you know, it, the movie wasn't about me, so it was about the family. Yeah. Very good. Uh, definitely. Uh, well, everybody else saw it? Yeah. Or, well, actually, no. Ray, you said you didn't. But you will be watching, I'm sure, Ray. And uh, Ryan, are you going to watch it, maybe? I have not seen it yet, but yeah, I want to watch it. <laughs> yeah, just like I told you, yeah, yeah they do have it. They do have it now. They spread it out on uh, other media. Like again, uh, if you have a Google account or just on YouTube, you could just look it up, purchase it, or rent it. So it's on there too. Um, it, and real quick, we're at that point. Real quick, where 
We are going to be guys. Get your mashed potatoes. It's that time. So oh, I need to, I need to um, take my headset out because I won't be doing that with the headset. I just gotta go grab the mashed potatoes from the kitchen real quick. I'll be right back. Sure, take your time because <clears throat> make sure I clean my nose. I'm good. And last time I got mashed potatoes oh, in my so nose. Warm. I'm surprised. <laughs> well, last year's reigning champion was uh, uh, AJC Game Studio. So. I gotta keep. I gotta keep up my. Uh, there you go. I got. So I got. I got corn. Meatloaf and mashed potatoes and gravy. So, oh, it looks good. It's got, I got the whole spread going. <laughs> I can't, I will not mess up my Batman hat. No way. No, don't mess up with that. No, I can't. I'm gonna, <clears throat> I thought I was gonna be feeling kind of not so good, you know, since I had gotten COVID the other day, but I'm actually um, pretty good right now. So, I guess what happens when you get vaccinated. <clears throat> Now, can you taste stuff right now or no? I can, yeah. I guess that's one thing that I, I can smell, I can taste. Is It was just kind of a um, slight headache and a sore throat, and the coughing wants to – it's like it wants to, but because – but I'll pause for a second. <coughs> and that's pretty much it. You know, and, yeah, I felt like a strange – um, it just felt strange in my upper left chest yesterday, but it seemed like everything kind of got better now. So I know. I so, thought that I got it. The last October, or no, after that, but I got the uh, it's a different type of pneumonia, and oh. it lasted for like two weeks. I mean, at that point, in time, like, you know, oh, dang. I was like, I wish I would have gotten it like, right over like, pneumonia. Oh, yeah, but it's a, oh, weird, kind of, it's a weird kind of pneumonia that people are getting. It's, it's called um, taco pneumonia. Okay. And I don't know if I, I'm probably botting the, uh, the technical name, but the, the layman's term is called walking lung, where it's like you know, all the symptoms of pneumonia, but you can still, you're not completely bedridden. You can still kind of go out. You just don't want to, but you can kind of get up and do things. Because I know pneumonia, it's like once you get it, <clears throat> and, uh, that's it. And, yeah. And, uh, I've never had it before. I've been talking all I mean, yeah, it sounds awful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For me, I think uh, the, only, <clears throat> the part that's a little sad is that uh, you know I got my three year old in the other room and he keeps calling my name, so I'll try to go out for a second to see him. I he was in the other room, so I Facetime his mom and we were just like we were talking. So and I I got to stay away from him for five days or people and so I mean I'm not that like bad, but still <clears throat> I don't want to pass it to him because he's not vaccinated or so and. Right. And and he's the one I want to protect, and you know, but either way, so it's just I got I want to see Christmas morning, to you know, I'll be distant. I want him to open his gifts, and then from that point, um, then he can go. You know, I don't know. Should he go? I know he slept with me for the last well few days before I found out, but he doesn't have no signs of sickness or nothing. His grandparents want him on Christmas Day, but is I don't know if that's. Can he still hold it himself and pass it to them? So that's the only part. I, I definitely say he could because I got COVID in July and my mom was the first one to uh, get it because I was staying with her. And um, and um, it took about a week uh, and we she got over it and we thought we were in clear. And surprise, surprise, I got it. <laughs> she passed it on to me. I would at least maybe maybe you can go get them tested. Yeah, I got a test here. Yeah, and hold on, maybe I'll check that out with him. Yeah, because I mean, that's the thing with kids is like they can get it, but they're gonna sur survive it like that. It's gonna be no problem. But if they pass it on to someone who's a senior citizen, yeah, that's the mm -hmm. oh, no. yeah, it spreads my, quick too. My dad, oh, okay. my dad, he uh, he beat um, melanoma, but he's not. Um, he basically got, you know, grandkids, and he said they would come over, and he was like, you know, they need to stay, stay, stay the F away. Right. You know, that's that's what they do. Kids, just they just pass that stuff on. They don't know they have it, you know, and they'll just give it to you. I worked in uh, the schools for a year. It's like every day I got sick just because of kids. Just little bags of germs, little germ spreaders. <laughs> yeah, he's right. Um, retro advisory board, um, was saying so. I'm thinking, um, yeah, I'll probably do that tomorrow. Um, yeah. 
and test them out. But all right, guys, um, let's get let's get down to the dirty business. I'm gonna play a quick scene of what we're going to do. Uh, who who did it better than us? We're gonna watch him and see how the he real did it The 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 true champion of the world is Ian Patrell. Let's watch him. Meatloaf, meatloaf, double beatloaf. I hate meatloaf. All right. All right, I'll get that kid to eat. Where's my screwdriver and my plumber's helper? I'll open up his mouth and I'll shove it in. Randy. My mother was more subtle. How do the little piggies go? <laughs> That's right. Oik, oik. Now, show me how the piggies eat. This is your trough. Show me how the piggies eat. You good boy. Show mommy how the piggies eat. <laughs> 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 That left at the end. <laughs> we'll wait for Ian to come back on before we get. Hey, right, Ryan, you got a timer for us? Yeah, I can do one. All right. I what did we do last time? Did we do 30 I seconds, I 20 seconds? Time. What did we do last time, Ian? Was it 20 seconds or 30 seconds? I think seconds? it was 30 seconds last time. It was 30 seconds last 30 seconds. time. Oh, shit. Damn, that's a long time. Shit. How long is it called? 30 seconds. Huh? I don't think it's the whole scene is 30 seconds. Uh, I got mine here. Nice. I'm gonna have to make this amount work. I Last know. time I had like triple oh. the amount. No, TJ, Carlos, you got. It. Okay. I had to take my glasses off. Three on the bottom. <laughs> oh. Mashed potatoes. Um. Okay. What do you got? Um. Okay. You got. Uh. Give me a second. If I can get to. What you got there? I just got regular dude. mashed potatoes that I prepped up an hour ago. And then we got um, a little. You got you got corn in there? Oh, I, I got some corn. Food. I got meatloaf. I got a lot of potatoes. That the works. <laughs> All right. Um, let me see. Let me get to mine plate real quick. I don't know if you can see mine's kind of like mashed yeah, potatoes, nice. meatloaf. I can't even see any of my glasses. Dang. Yeah, I can't see you either. <laughs> I'm gonna miss my plate. All right, uh, right now. Wait again. Thirty seconds. You're saying? Thirty seconds. All right. Oh, and Let's what is this? Wait, how many? How many are we doing again? Sorry. Um, Ian, how many seconds are we doing again? Sorry, can hear you. I would do thirty. That's or what 20? last time was thirty. Yeah. Last time it was thirty. You guys want to do thirty or twenty? Yeah. Well, we'll uh, <laughs> after thirty seconds, we'll stop. And then we'll okay. go back. We'll you know inspect everyone's plate to see <laughs> what see happens. what's been consumed. <laughs> we're, okay, we're trying to consume and get messy. Right. All right, <laughs> all right. Give me one second. I'm a, why am I more nervous than last time? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing this again. But I have a championship to hold up. <laughs> hold on, this guy's uh important for deep breath. <laughs> Well, it's all, right, um, in DJ one. <laughs> all right, Ryan, let us know when you're ready. Just kind of go, Ryan, do three, two, one. Right when you say one, we go straight for it. Ryan, go for it. All right. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> oh, this is gross. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I don't want to snort or go up my nose. <laughs> Ten seconds. This is disgusting. <laughs> and that's it. That's it. All right. Oh. With the uh, mashed potato dude. Yeah. So oh. Get a nice imprint of your face. Great. 
<laughs> I got some of my face. Yeah. Plenty. All right. Oh my god. Do you play? Oh wait. See so mine. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Oh, let's get close close ups on um faces here, real fast. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right. <laughs> Blowing potatoes out of his nose. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. Where's my? Where am I? I think I have still some in my nose right now. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's the best for COVID, dude. It really yeah. is. All right, DJC. Do you see your plate? Oh, look at that. Oh man. I mean, that was a thick <laughs> mountain. I, like I had to really dig in from the side, like. <laughs> Once again, more potatoes wow. in my nose. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I prepared with the towel. <laughs> oh. All right. Um, Kuchikas, Ian, please. Well, let's see. We'll start with the uh, mashed potato dude. Um, I give him. Uh, I give him credit because he he just went straight with mashed potatoes. You know, he didn't add anything else to it. He said, "All right, we're doing a mashed potato eating contest. Let's just do." mashed potato. So he just was, you know, tried and true, uh, which is good. Uh, Kronos, you also added something else to it. Um, you added the, it looks like you had a side of meatloaf um, with it. It was all chopped up, um, which is also probably smart. So this way, you know, <laughs> you for it and everything. Let me go to uh, DJ uh, C. He prepared a full meal. I mean, he had the mashed potatoes, the corn. I'm curious where that slice of meatloaf went, though. It's well, it's <laughs> it's partially bit. Like I, I right. then I started to concentrate on the mashed potatoes afterwards. Okay, I didn't yeah. say it before because I thought maybe you had thrown it there and then <laughs> cleverly slipped it away. As yeah, nope. no, no, it's it's partially right. there. Half of it's okay. there. So there we go. Fair game, sir. Fair game. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So, everyone did a great job. This is very entertaining. Um, <laughs> watch you all do it. Um, but I think my decision, I'm going to have to go with the reigning champion again, DJC Games. Yeah! 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 yeah. Well, God bless you and cheers. I was, I was, you, almost, you almost had me. You almost, that was, cause that's why I asked you, where did that slice of meat look? <laughs> up off the floor and said it fell off the plate. I'd say no. Right. <laughs> oh man, I'm missing my shirt. Yeah, I got nothing on the floor. It literally it <laughs> held together like paste. Like it didn't even move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so I was going for you know how much food was consumed as far as style goes. I mean, y'all did shut your face and you know. So. <laughs> uh, so, you guys are like, our reigning champion. Two X champion. All right. My mother's gonna be proud. I tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> it's um. <coughs> it's in my beard. Okay, one second. I gotta go for X. I had to do. I had to do a mashed potato eating contest in Indiana one time. Yeah, for the uh, Welcome Center, and they had different sections of, of kids. You know, you had like kindergartners. You had, you know. Oh, wow elementary school and then you know older and um man to sit there and, and tell a child they didn't win <laughs> all right <laughs> so, well, that's life hey 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 it's it's not that bad it's like, <laughs> fine that you didn't win this <laughs> it's actually you're so and but uh, to see some of the parents that were just like egging their kids on, like it was their soccer match. Like, come on, come on, boy, come on, man, come on. Really cool. It's like, hey, calm down. This right. Is, you know. <laughs> so. so, as we um, finish that off, um, um, Ian Patrell, I wanted to ask you something. Yeah. Um, since you did the, um, when you did the second film, do you think that? You could pursue acting at a higher level, or just you want to do that one-time thing. Um, I would rather just do. When you say like a higher level, do you mean like more like maybe like a full movie? Maybe kind of you're more of a, more in the movie, more of a star. No, 
Oh, yeah. Action film. No, I'm kidding. Well, maybe. You never know. I definitely think I could, but I think it's just, I think it would have to be the, the part. Um, I'm, I'm not shy about, like, if I read something and I think somebody else can do it better, I have no problem saying, get somebody else to do it. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm very, you know, as far as my acting ability, I don't, I've never really thought of myself as, you know, one of these, like, true actors. Like, you read, like, you hear these stories about actors, like, how they get into art, and it's just, that's just not, that's not me, you know. Exactly. And it's fun. And that's why I think I've always liked, you know, the smaller part. I would like to act more. Of course I would. You know, it's, it's a fun job to do. Um, but I don't expect, you know, anybody to, you know, bring, you know, the next the next big thing to my lap and say, you please read this. It would be an honor if you, like, if I read it and went, you need to get somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> if to get your idea for the third film, you'd be a part of it. This, there you go. I don't see myself in the third film. So um, that's the other thing. Yeah, I don't even see myself in it. It's just all, it's all, it's all Ralphie. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd like to. And, you know, I never wanted to really quit acting, but I've always just had like a certain idea of what I wanted to do. And, you know, if I don't get to do it, then I don't want to do it. You know, I'm not going to do something that I, I don't feel confident about. I'd rather give it to somebody else. You know, someone. I'm not as hungry as I used to be as an actor. So, what did, what did this person say? Hold on. As long as I didn't have helicopter parents yelling them on Kwan's email. <laughs> Same thing, Amateur League. Let's <laughs> see, <laughs> 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 so, um, <clears throat> I think I can just go on real quick by saying uh, a lot of things I noticed. I think we all noticed it with like references from between both movies, you know, things that you would see like uh, Ralphie bribing, uh, I think it was Delphi Publishing and giving the guy like uh, the Marshall Fields candy or something like that. And then yeah. compared that to compared that to the uh, uh, I think it was Miss Shields and the, the school teacher giving her a big fruit basket. So it's like yeah. they did a whole, yeah. Yeah, he opens up the drawer and you see, you know, oh yeah, there was there was quite a few of those. So yeah. Yeah. the dream sequence was cool too that they did that. Yeah. So that was I, I they did that just perfect too. I, I thought it was great. Yeah. yeah, I liked a lot of those type of things. It kind of made you feel like okay, you know, <clears throat> every the entire movie did those things and they made you remember a lot of the first film and <clears throat> and when you went to the whole Santa Claus, you know, thing too and. They were in the mall, and uh, what does Ralphie say? Um, don't let Santa kick you in the face, and you know, you know, it's just kind of all yeah, like little, yeah, little throwbacks. Um, I will really say that this was one of the coolest things about being part of this. And now, if you don't know, um, or those who do know, that you know, Peter is obviously very good friends, and his business partner is uh, Vince Vaughn. We all know who Vince Vaughn is. Yeah. Yeah. And he's, he's one of my favorite actors. I love Vince Vaughn. I always have. And we were doing a, uh, a podcast with Peter and the cast. And um, uh, Vince was there. Now, like I said, I'm a big fan of Vince. So I come walking in, and here comes Vince just walking out of this room, walks right up to me and goes, Hey, man, you did a great job. Come here. He gives me a big hug. It says you do a wonderful job, man. It's so I'm, I'm so happy that you're part of this. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, I'm just saying, that's, this is not how that's supposed to happen. He's not supposed to be thanking me. I'm supposed to be thanking him. You know, so. <laughs> but that was a pretty cool moment. You know, I got to meet. You know, that's one thing cool about this business is you do get to meet certain people, and you get to meet them differently as you would say a fan. Um, I've met people that I've really liked and admired as a fan. And it's a lot different when you get to meet them as something else. Yeah. And another cool moment, this has nothing to do with Christmas story, but another person who I got to meet, who I'm a very big fan of, and just in the most casual of ways, was um, Bruce Campbell. 
Oh, oh my god, I love Bruce Campbell, dude. Bruce Campbell's awesome. He, oh. I remember because my my friend uh, Suzanne, she used to, uh, she was dating um, uh, Ted Raimi for a while. That's Sam Raimi. Oh. And so I would go over there and we'd hang out. We went to this bar one day. We we're just hanging out, having some drinks. And Ted gets on it. He's like, "Oh, I got to call one for a second. Yeah. No, we're at, we're at the bar. Yeah. yeah. You know, come over, whatever you want. Over here. All right. Bye. Hangs up. Looks at my friend. Goes. That was Bruce. And I'm thinking. Oh shit. Is that? Is it? And um. So sure enough. Uh, uh, 20 minutes later, here comes Bruce Campbell walking through the bar with his sleep wife and walks right up to Ted. He's like, hey, Ted, how you doing? And Ted goes, oh, um, Bruce, this is my good friend, Ian. I'm like, hey. And he's like, Ian, nice to meet you. And we just, you know, and I just like, excuse me for it. So I go outside and I call my friend Mike, um, who's another, you know, movie buff and the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I just go, Mike, Mike, you never tell me. I'm too great now. Close yourself, you walk right back in and order a drink. And you know, he was just exceptionally nice. Yeah. And had a great conversation and just got to hang out with these people. And that's one of the coolest things is about part of being in the business is you get to, you know, you get to meet these people that you really like, really admire, who have entertained you for years. Yeah. And just sit down and have a just a nice conversation. So, you know, and not that I don't want this to sound like I'm any great success or anything, but I try and keep that when I meet people. You know, and if someone does want to talk to me, I try and wiggle out of the conversation and talk about something else. Like, let's just have a conversation. Let's just talk about whatever. Wow. I know it's like you do shows like this because then you, can, you just have random conversations. I enjoy that the most. And I always tell Absolutely. people, if you ever get a chance to meet people, don't talk to them about their work. Just Find something else to talk about. I'm more likely than I want to sit down and just talk to you. So if you go up and grabbing them, I love you, I love you, I love you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Shove them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. You know, it's like, you know, hey, this is a crazy weather we're having, huh? It's like, <coughs> we might get that conversation with Harrison Ford. But <laughs> <you know. laughs> that, would, that would be pretty epic. <laughs> But that probably would happen anyways. Yeah. <laughs> it's like such a sweet guy though in interviews. No. <laughs> I can imagine like if I ever saw him in public. Like that's the one person you'd want to meet is Harrison Ford, but I don't think I would I don't I wouldn't I wouldn't go up to him. I would leave him alone. I'm like, I can't because you're already Oh, you don't want to talk to anybody. <laughs> yeah. times I, I there were people that I wanted to meet. Yeah. I was doing chiller theater in New Jersey and uh, Pee Wee Herman had showed up. Like he's just been out of the game for a while. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I love Pee Wee and I love Paul Rubens, but the sad part was, is that he was there as Pee Wee Herman. He was in the suit and the bow tie and he was, uh, and you know, people <coughs> would do the, hey, da, 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 da. <laughs> and I said, man, I really would like to meet him. And they go, well, you know, because I was there as a signer, you know, you kind of get, you can say, like, I want to meet this person. And they're like, right this way. But I said, I don't want to meet Pee Wee. I want to meet Paul. So I said, if I can meet him afterwards, that'd be great. I don't want to meet Pee Wee because I don't want, he's going to have to break character, you know, to talk to me. So I didn't yeah. like to meet him. So. That's, I met uh, I met uh, Robert England that plays Fre you know Freddy Krueger and uh, talk about a sweet guy that wants likes to talk. That yeah. guy will talk about anything anytime, but super sweet dude. Yeah, and I, I, most celebrities, I think, you know, they do like to talk, and that's why I always tell people it's like if you meet somebody, if you can talk about something else other than their career, they'll probably they're probably more likely to want to sit down and talk. To you. 
Right. And just you can just talk about anything. And like that's that's gotta be a hell of a lot cooler to have a conversation, you know, with a celebrity than just like, yeah, I, I chatted them for twenty minutes about their their career. Like they know their career. They did it, they know it. They only they're know constantly it. repeating it too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they like to save that for like talk shows and everything, but yeah, if you can meet them, you just you know, chat with them. They're, they're really, they're really great people. So, hey, uh, <clears throat> oh, go ahead. You're finishing, Ian. Sorry. Okay, yeah. I <clears throat> sort of yeah. say real quick for those who are watching. Really um, if you come to LA and you want to meet celebrities, go work at a Starbucks. <laughs> I was just in, uh, in LA uh, <clears throat> um, in May. But I didn't really get to see anybody. Not even in a Starbucks. I was in a Starbucks. So, I was in LA. <laughs> you gotta work for a Starbucks. Then you yeah. get I so that's where they all that's where they would all go. So, uh, I think right now we're at the end of the well, not the end, but Ian, do you got time for some more questions? A few more questions from each of us or are yeah. you you got time? Okay. For any of those who any of the guys who are, are with um let's say uh, Ray or DJs, any of you guys, if you guys got to go or stay on, please, you know, you guys, it's fine if you guys need to or just stay on with us, you know, so make sure everyone's cool and able to stay and uh, ask some more questions. So, all right, let's keep on, keep it going for a little bit more. Okay. Um, did anyone have, let's see, uh, Ray, did you have something that you wanted to ask? Uh, no, I wanted to ask about the uh, puppeteering, but uh, DJ uh, covered that before. Okay. Um, Ryan? Um. Yeah, no, I I think we've covered all. Uh, anything additional? Okay, um, mashed mashed potato, dude, Jeff. Um, it's just been well, fun. since on. since Ian was mentioning about a whole conversation about you know having a normal conversation, I want to ask, how are you doing? What have you been up to lately, Ian? And it doesn't even have to be anything specific. It doesn't have to do with your career. Just generally, what have you been up to lately, and how are you doing? Um, uh, I've been doing all right. Um, I mean, this past, this past year, it's been, it's been, it's been rough, but I've been surviving. So obviously I'm, you know, out here in LA, one of the things I did is I moved out here to help take care of my mom. So, um, she's mm-hmm. all right. um the, the, the saddest thing is last October is I had to say goodbye to my best friend, my dog Orwell. That's oh, I'm morning. sorry. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Man. when you know uh, he contacted me, you know, wanted to do a show, and that's one of the reasons why I was like, I, I don't think I'm going to do the show because I don't, you know, really know where I was going to be. Um, it's still very, it's still very, you know, you know, and, and like like anybody who's ever lost something, it's, it's not something you necessarily get over. Um, <clears throat> move on, but you don't necessarily get over it. So. And yeah. it's really hard to like have to deal with that and then the movie coming up and then having to do that. And there was a lot of things where, you know, because that dog, you know, was a, was was part of that that movie. Um, I found that dog when I was staying at the Christmas story house. That's where I found him. Oh, oh wow. Up. I think you told us about that the last yeah. time, I'm pretty sure. He um, you know, he grew up for the first year of his life in that neighborhood at the <laughs> Christmas story house. Wow. So that's why the Christmas story house has always had, you know, a strong connection that way. But there's been other reasons why I don't, you know, really care for the place that much. Um so then coming to, you know, almost forty years later, we're doing the sequel and the day that we had the first screening, which was on October 12th, it was October 11th that I had to see the five. So hey. I wasn't even sure I wanted to go to the screening, to be honest. I was just like, you know, I just want to be alone. I don't want to be around anymore. Yeah. And, but I had to, you know, you know, man up and go do it because everybody was, you know, counting on having to cast. Them. So yeah. I had to it anyways but i was just very quiet and very you know don't talk to me right now and i'm not letting everybody know what was going on because you know you can't just break down in front of everybody it's like i don't want to turn this into a and this is a celebration 
it's not about me. Yeah. Um, so you just kind of have to go through it. But after everybody found out, everybody, you know, was very you know, comforted. Even Peter sent me, you know, a nice message saying, hey, sorry. sorry. Um, so really, I mean, just the past couple of months, I mean, that's kind of what I've been going through. So, yeah. you know, and now with the holidays coming up, you know, my first Christmas without my dog, I just said, you know, fuck it, I'm not doing Christmas. I'm just not. Everybody else can do it. Have a good time. And we appreciate you so much for your, your time you're giving us today, knowing you're going through, you know, difficulties in life. So, yeah, well, that was the other thing. It's like, yeah, for a while, I knew, like, everything was going to be, you have to, you have to move on. Um, you know, I know you went through some hard stuff in the past, too, because I read your Facebook. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's been there. Uh, you know, I'll say quick, if, go ahead. If, if, you know, if he can still do this, going through the hard stuff that he did, uh, you know, I could do it too, and at least you know, grant you, you know, the idea. It's like, you know, I'll do this for you, buddy. We'll do this. So. And thank you for that. I'll, I'll just say quickly the the past, to say, year and a half or two years has been besides losing uncles and cousins, and uh, I mentioned to you, uh, my cousin, my cousin, um, uh, she was um. Uh, how can I say it? Uh, her name was uh, <clears throat> Jessica. She had she had passed away. She was my age. She was um, different. You know, I don't know what's the right word for it, but um, special needs child. Or you know, she was just. I just didn't expect it. I just remember after some funerals I've been through, then this one popped up right away, and then you know I burst out. I was on my knees crying, and I never thought that after going through with my uncles and you know others and my other cousins from past and. It was difficult, you know, and you just you lose yourself for a second, and you and you're all alone. I was all alone for that second, that moment, no one to grab me and such. And it's just kind of like, and then when you think about it now, it's just like, and even like a few weeks ago, my brother's dog passed away, but he was like part of my family too because he was with us. And our little guy, his name was um, his name was Pepe, and it's like he passed on. And it's just different because you're used to seeing and being with him for years. And you know, I lived with my brother for years, and you know, then you know, little guy's gone too, and so it's just everything all together builds up and it could drive me differently. But we got to move on. We got to stay strong because for all I can think about is what I got to do my best for my three year old son, do the best until you know my day comes. You know, so it's just kind of being strong all together, give each other the best we can to show that love and respect for each other. And like yeah. I said, but you gotta find uh, you gotta find that time. I think that's the thing. We all, you know, we all grieve our own way. Um, no. That's one thing. But, you know, you do have to find that time where you have to tell people, hey, you need to give me some time and just relax. Because if you go straight into life again with whatever's going on in your head, you know, it can cause resentment towards people. And you yeah. Say, hey, why the fuck did you do this shit? You know, and they're like, I didn't. So you have to just. For everybody else's benefit and say, I need to step back, I need to deal with whatever I need to deal with. And so that's just for you know, anybody. Like I said, we all grieve our own way, we all go through things our own way. We're not all the the same in that sense. And uh, everybody was cool as far as you know the example of the Christmas story and they're like, you, you take your time, you do whatever you need to do. If you don't want to oh. do it, and I know some people out there going, well, it's just a dog. What's the point? Like, it's, uh, it's, it's not. It doesn't matter what it's it is. It's like a family member. Yeah, it's, it's not even. Yeah. What it is to the person. Yeah. 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 Whatever that is to that person, that means something to them. And that's what you have to so, you know, Somebody can say, oh, they lost their best friend. I may never know the dude, but that's their best friend. You know, right. if that person is your friend, then you, then you have a understanding. So, I know. Way to bring this down. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's, it's fine. Like, on, like, honestly, with what I ask of, when I ask questions, I want people to be 100% honest. Like, if something is going on. Yeah, I, like, I, I, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, I, I appreciate it, like I said. I didn't mean to turn it into that, but. No. Nah. <laughs> like, you know what? I, I don't yeah. think. That's, that's What's happening? 
couple of months, you know, that I was going through trying to, you know, continue on with projects. Um, you know, I wish it was something different. I wish I had the, hey, next month I got this coming out, but I don't, I don't know right now. So, move on and find the next big thing right when it comes. It'll come at the right time. Yeah. <coughs> well, when you know, I get. I'll give you. I'll, I'll let everybody know, and then we can get back on the show and do something about that. Cool. Nice. You know, one of these that's not always about stories. <laughs> you know, there's so many good things, so many things we can bring up and invent. You know, I mean, bring another big yeah. show. You know, in that that's nothing to do with again, like you're saying, yeah. of the Christmas story into something more different. You know, yeah. You know, as we can grow. So like that's what they know you for. That's what, that's what they want to know. About. Yeah. Got to come up with something. So that's on me. That's, uh, <laughs> so, um, let's see. Who was I asking? Um, did, did did you say? Did you have something or? Uh, I think I think we hit everything. I I was uh yeah because that was just the experience on the set and then the puppet stuff. I can't wait to see what you do with puppets. So like, I I'd, I'd love to be on a show if you come back and talk about that for sure. Yeah. I'll talk all day about that. Puppeteering and all that. Um, oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, so Ryan, Ryan, did you have anything, or you're good? You said you were good, right? Yeah, no, I said I was good. Yeah. And um, mashed potato, did you have any leading uh, anymore? I just want to say um, real quick, uh, following up what I previously said. I think uh, I know you said everybody grieves in different ways. Sorry to go back on this topic for a second. <laughs> well, I will say, fine, <clears throat> um, I kind of went through a period uh, last year where I lost lost someone very important to me. And I think uh, what definitely helped me the most was just like kind of thinking about all things to be thankful for and, you know, think trying to find what makes you happy. Like it right. could be anything. And yeah. for me, it was like, you know, you know, calling up a friend, talking with them and whatnot. Anything related to that that uh, would make you happy that could cheer you up, definitely do it because. I, I thought I was going to be in that period for a long time and um, with the support of friends and family and whatnot. And yeah, uh, that, that helped me a lot. And, you know, planning things and, you know, even getting together and just having like casual chat and whatnot, like that just, that helped me so much. I, again, we all grieve in different ways and we have all different ways of, um, of things that make us happy, but uh, and it's very generic advice, but all I could really say is no, it's, it's, find find what you love to do and and do it because you'll come to appreciate it so much more once you do it. You may, you may not find it at first. You know, that's the thing. I know even my, my, my uncle lost his dog this reason. Um, so, we, you know, we bonded over that. But, you know, and, and that thing you, know, you may not find that thing exactly at first. You know, I just feel like you know, the world is gonna the world is gonna end. And, you know, I don't want to go on, but um, you know, if you just keep trying, you will eventually find. I'm still trying to figure out. You know, what am I? You know, how am I gonna? You know, honor this or, or remember it in, in other ways. Um, like I said, I mean, my dog was the most important thing in my life, but. Yeah, for, for other people, you know, I, I completely understand. Sometimes they just don't know what to do. And you have to find that one thing that makes you happy. And it's hard. Um, I will say this, and I'm not condoning it, but, yeah, alcohol helps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really hey, I know. I'm, alcohol. Who were you there? <laughs> actually, I had a doctor's appointment. So I, sure. to <laughs> I they wanted to do a, yeah, uh, they wanted want to get some blood work. Ask me about you know, do you drink? And I'm like, yeah, I've been drinking. They're like, how much? I go every day. What do you mean? I go from when I get up to when I go to bed. I go, okay, we're not going to do any blood work until you cut down. <laughs> I, said, not, I don't have a liver right now. Right, right. <laughs> oh yeah, the, the enzyme levels will be off, off the roof. <laughs> <laughs> now that I've you know I've cut back and go get my blood work, but and the doctor was like. We're not gonna do it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm being sad. I'm right. like, you know. So. Yeah, I think um, whether it's simple, 
a simple thing for me of I lost uh, my turtle a few years ago. Even my turtle, I think about it, I still get sad. I still feel down like for a second. So I have to think about my the, just the turtle. Someone might be like, what the? You know, but for me, it, he meant something to me. Mm-hmm. My little turtle had for years. He he got real big, and then I guess it just one day he was in the tank. And I wish I could have let him. I was trying to let him go the week prior, but he had passed. I guess something with the weather, and I was gonna put him in the pond. And well, he just died and died in his uh, tank. So either way, it's like when we go through and you know simple you know things in life. And my uh, August, the whole month of August and half of of, of um half of um of July, I was sleeping in my car. So I had my own differences and things going on in my personal life, right. but I got out. Of, I got out of that. I broke out of it, and now I'm, you know, I'm here at home, and I'm just trying. I got a job, and things are good, and I just have to keep on, you know, with my worries and such. I got to keep it good and well for my my children, and and whatever we have, we for ourselves or whatever's coming in life. So yeah, um, either way, <coughs> uh, what did um. Hold on, she said on um, Michelle Big. Okay, I just okay. Yeah. Um, let's. I wanted to finish off by um, like saying to see anything was last. Um, I think we already asked this one. Let me see. Um, after filming, um, everything you know, both movies. Did your relationship grow with everyone all together, like on cast or people you might have talked to, or did you grow new relationships or? Um. Yeah, I mean, as far as like. What, you know, Scotty and Zach and Jono. Um, we've been doing, you know, stuff throughout the years, you know, together. Um, it was doing signings, so I've always been, you know, in contact with them. Um, it was it was good to, you know, obviously with, with Peter, you know, reconnecting with him. And, uh, you know, just to be able to, you know, just sit down and, like I said, talk with him and just have regular conversations was good. So we definitely got to to week. Um, you know, there's there's obviously new people that we met along the way as well. Um, I didn't get I don't get to see them as much, but I mean, for instance, you know, Erin Hayes. Let's not forget, you know, she played the wife. Of okay. Peter, and you know, she's someone that is now you know part of this. Um, you have Juliana who played Julie, and then River who played Mark. They did a wonderful job at doing it. So they're now part of this. So there's new people. And then of course Julie Haggerty. You know, Legend. Played, yeah. Which is which was great, you know. Um, from airplane. So <laughs> she did a great job. I thought that was that was a surprise I was like, Oh dude, I was like, it's <laughs> Robert. You know? she, she did. I mean she definitely played it different. She played it her own way, which was which was nice. But I thought she did I thought she did a great job and I mean, just such a just such a sweet person, you know, to hang out with. So, um, you know, because sometimes you, you you don't know what these people are going to be like when you meet them. But I mean, and every time I saw her, she kept running up to me. She's like, "Oh, there's nice." <laughs> We're done filming, but thank you. <laughs> I'm not good at the sentimental stuff. They cut out the scene, and I know why they cut it out. Is I mean, he Randy comes in and he gives out the gifts, and um, he gives one special gift to his mom. And Julie is just a phenomenal actress. I mean, she just really can like get in the moment of like any sort of emotion. I can't. It's just. You know, really difficult. So I give her this gift, which really, in my opinion, was just a crappy gift. But she gives it to her, and she's just like all overcome with emotion, and you see her eyes welling up. Like I actually gave her the gift, but that's just how good of an actor she is. She's like, oh, what do I do? She goes, I don't know. And so, okay. <laughs> So it's been a really great experience with um, doing both films all together for yourself. Uh, I think, uh, do you have, like, how do you feel about, like, when you think uh, Darren McGavin passed away several years ago. Do you still, like, remember him so much? Do you have, like, a a, a great moment you had with him that you remember and cherish? 
I mean, I don't have any like personal moments with him. And he was very, you know, he was just a very professional guy. He was just, you know, he was a dude. So when he was done filming, he'd go with the crew and go have a drink. And, you know, I was busy being a kid and he was busy being an adult. So yeah, yeah. on set together, it was very professional. Um, we never really had, you know, moments together. He wasn't like one of those like on set, you know, dads who was like, "Well, come here, slugger, and tell you a story." <laughs> you know, he probably paid more attention to Peter, and I think because Peter was one of those kids, he was just, you know, he was like thirty years old at twelve, and so Darren probably could relate to him a lot. Then, where I was just. You know, I was just an average eight-year-old running around, and <laughs> you know, like I got nothing to do. I got nothing for this. Game. So, um, yeah, I don't really have. I don't have any bad news, but I don't have any like personal stories. You know, where he sat me down and told me this is how this business works. This is what you do. It's like, just know your lines. Don't mess up. I don't want to be here all day. <laughs> <laughs> Um, thank, uh, anyone, last minute questions before we head off? Uh, Ray, uh, Mashed Potato, Ryan, DJC, you guys are cool? Yeah. Uh, yeah it's definitely, the, I'm good. You yeah. have a question for – you got a question for us, Ian? Um, I don't really. <laughs> yeah, it's been a, definitely a great ride and a, a great experience for the second um, time we've been here. But, um, let me see. He's someone's uh, – yeah, watch the replay. I, I won. I won. <laughs> Dude, you, yeah, that's why he came in later on. Yeah, he won again. Until next year. Until <laughs> next year. Until next year. <laughs> Maybe he can join the next time. But, yeah, it's been a, such a great time and an opportunity for you to give give us after last year. And, and of course, uh, when you had uh, – you going through your struggles and you still gave the opportunity after we talked later. And I appreciate you beyond everything. And this is something I've been waiting for. And – Great. Um, I would have been fine, you know. If I had, you know, told, you know, been done, have been okay. And but either way, we're here today, and um, I'm doing fine. You know, a little COVID here, but it's all good. <coughs> but um, fine. Either way, um, you guys all uh, having a great holidays. I would say, uh, Ray and uh, Master, everyone doing well overall. So it's yeah, good to yeah. know that you know. It's glad. <laughs> and uh, for you, Ian. Um, Oh, I'm just trying to not to. I'm trying to burst out like a, a cough for a second, <coughs> but uh, I'm gonna give me some tea in a second. So either way, um, I'm gonna end with the um, the uh, outro. Um, here the video I played in the beginning. Uh, if you guys wanna um, stay along and say goodbye or chat, or if you guys wanna like click off if you want to, but either way, I will sit back and talk to you guys right after we end. Just uh, I want to thank everybody who will stop by. I'm gonna start from the comments. Who came to uh, let's see? There was a Legend of Zelda link to the facts. Um, there was uh, Arlene Zyrus. There was Gary Tolan. Uh, let's see who else. Carol. I'll go down, down, down. There's a Shirley Morris Retro Advisory Board. Um, go, go down here. Uh, Michelle Baker. And we got Miko Bro. Uh, thank you guys all for joining in. Uh, it was a great time. And we will. See you guys next time. Uh, everyone have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And uh, this is the Corona <laughs> Show. This is with all the cool guys here with Ian Petrella. And until next time, guys. Okay. Take care, guys. Here we are. Yeah. Later. I'm See you. Some all right. Not mashed potatoes. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Take care, guys. See you guys until next time. All right.
mistletoeing and hearts will be glowing when loved ones are near. It's the most wonderful time. Yes, the most wonderful time.